Well, those of you that have been wondering what progress I've been making on the Land Rover since I dragged it here uh, back at the end of last year, none. <laughs> no progress. Untouched it. Just after a, we winched it into position, uh, it was the busiest time of the year as I got all the orders sorted for the usual Christmas rush and then it's been raining ever since then. Until now, sun's out, so run out of excuses. Let me get on with it. I can start at the front and well, we'll just see what happens. I'm going to start right here on the bumper. <laughs> well, that was easy. Good old WD-40, also some penetrating spray which is a bit thinner, a bit more creeping, should get in, but there's hardly any of it, and I'm not going out for more. not the official bolt. <laughs> really not. I was going to say there's some galvanising under here, but it's not indicating a galvanised chassis because I can see that these front dumb irons are replacements. There's the weld seam there and there. Hmm. Well, there's our first bit of chassis corrosion. Won't be the last. One, it's not really attached. Oh. Yeah, it's mostly loose. So what I did with the other Land Rover, and again I'll do this one, is just clear out all the wiring and start again from scratch. This isn't as bad as the other Land Rover in fairness, that caught fire twice. Next thing, I'll take the wings off. Probably going to involve getting the angle grinder out. As expected then really, I'm going to have to get the grinder out. Um, the inner wing where it connects to the bulkhead, it's just got three bolts. They're all going to be replaced anyway, so I might as well just chop those off. Thank you. 
That is a surprise. Oh, good. Ah, oh, that's why. That's a giant screw rather than a um, bolt going into a captive nut. Ah, yes, I remember now. These aren't captive nuts in here, they're those um, little spiral things. Oh, roof hope. get carried away examining it just yet. Um, let's move on to the doors. Now here's some unusual damage. You see these crisscross lines all over the place. Cows. This Land Rover was parked up for years and years right up to a fence in Mark's garden and on the other side of the fence was a pasture full of cows. And for some reason, cows like nibbling um, rubber surround. That's why this window is missing. They had the entire seal of this, and then the glass dropped out. And yeah, I had a good old chew it up. Anyway, let's try and get the doors off. So unlike my other Land Rover, the Series 2, um, which has bolt-on hinges that kind of stick out at the top here, these have great big screws which go into captive nuts inside the bulkhead. Um, yeah, and unless they've been installed with loads of copper slip, they're not coming out. <laughs> I'm going to make a, a token effort here with a big screwdriver, and I'm going to try and tap it as I turn. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it to move. What I was trying to achieve by hitting it with a hammer was to break the rust seal that's inevitably formed between the screw and the body of the hinge and also where it threads into the captive nut in the bulkhead. But as you can see, to no avail. I've just noticed I must have encountered some similar problem at some point in the past because on this screwdriver I've actually ground flats into it there. I might just try putting some force on it. So it's not a great fit either at the moment. What I'll do is sand off the very tip of this screwdriver. So just a couple of seconds on the belt sander and taking the tip off the screwdriver. Should sit a bit more snugly. But yeah, I'd be stunned if this works as well. Bloody hell. <laughs> Yay. That really is a big bonus. I was totally expecting to have to drill these heads out and then extract what was left. Yeah. 
one's broken off. I think what I'll do then is is to <laughs> is to delay having to do anything by taking these nuts off here um, and leaving that hinge on the bulkhead for now. Same again, hopefully. Now they're loose. <laughs> that loads better. Next thing I want to take off is the roof. But it's going to be a bit of a faff on the own. I reckon what I'm going to try and do is into the inside, so I've got some working room, undo all the bolts that hold the roof on, leave this windscreen in place, and then I can get in there, lift up the roof, and inch it along there until it pops off the front. Or I could bring it sideways. I'll see how heavy it is. At least it's, this isn't um, tropical roof. Yeah, the last 109 I dismantled had the twin skin tropical roof, which is quite heavy. This is a spare brake pedal box and servo unit, and indeed master cylinder. It came off a 109 station wagon. And we'll be going on this. This one, um, it's just got a normal brake cylinder, there's no servo. There's a servo there. The 200 TDI has a, um, a vacuum pump on it to power this, and that just gives a lot of increased um, braking force. So it doesn't change anything apart from the braking system, just it magnifies the force of the brake pedal is probably the best way of looking at it. Well, best way of looking at it because that's what it does. Let's see what else we've got. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the carpet that's been used to line the ceiling with it. The backing's completely dissolved, so that's that's no good. That's completely horrible. I just ran the tops here, stop them blowing away when those storms came. It's always embarrassing when you have to go and retrieve your tarp from the other side of the valley. It's a spare front panel for a series 2. Where are these sacks going from? Certainly not me buying kiln dried log. Yeah, won't be keeping the seat. I've actually saved the seats from my old discovery and I'm going to try and fit those in the cab. I'm not sure there, they might be a bit too big. These are two, well, I was going to say brand new. Let's call them unused. <laughs> They're quite old now, but yeah, unused um, front springs, those parabolic springs. So they'll be going on this. Nice 
Okay. Grill, it's not really good shape. I think I'll make a grill for it. I don't like these plastic ones. A bit more floral. Be useful one day. That'll do for now. This is interesting. So this padding has got to come off. Oh, that wasn't difficult. It's comprised of this shoe crap. Yeah, still breathing in bits of carpet. Uh, it's comprised of um, rotten plywood and some foam and some vinyl. Very rotten plywood. You might be able to see then as I'm ripping this off that there's the occasional bolt like that one. And it looks to me like there's no seal, there's no rubber seal between the bodywork and the roof. Just a the case then of finding all these bolts and undoing them. None of these fixings are coming off. Okay, in contrast to the roof, what's holding on the van side is an absolute mishmash of fixings, nearly all of which are completely corroded. Yes. There's some grinder action, I think. That came out wrong. <laughs>
quite controlled the same, is it? Well, I think that's a pretty decent start. The next big task will be to take everything off the bulkhead and remove that. So that's all this bit here, the steering column, and then this big lump of stuff there. But now I'm going to tidy up all the mess I've just made. <laughs> Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.